Welcome viewers. In this video we are going to look about the pad and the chimney type of foundation for transmission line tower. This is a design flow chart. In that foundation design should have a three main components such as input analysis and the design of elements. So after completing this uh, three process like input analysis and the design of elements then we can go for detailing so before that the detailing this three should be very sure and this should be completed so when looking into that input so these are the three major input for design of the foundation for transmission line tower one is a soil parameter which should have soil recommendation bearing capacity density of soil submerged or water table this information should be available in soil parameter or soil investigation report second input is a tower leg geometry this is recorded to fix the tower slope and the true length factor these two parameters are very important to transfer the structure forces to the foundation as the structure main leg are in tapered or slope conditions we need these two information or we need to calculate these two to transfer the exact vertical forces like uplift and uh, uh, compression to the foundation and the third one input is a foundation loads so this inclusive of uh, both uh, normal and broken wire condition having a four type of uh, four directional loads such as a uh, compression which is a vertical downward acting from the structure tension or uplift which is a vertical upward extracted to from the structure third one is longitudinal side thrust longitudinal it means it is a horizontal direction parallel to conductor and the transverse side thrust is a fourth component of foundation loads so this is a transverse side means direction which is a horizontal direction perpendicular to conductor span so these are the basic input required to design the foundation or to prepare the calculation for foundation next one is analysis in this analysis there are two components one is foundation geometry with that foundation geometry we need to check the second component called foundation stability so that foundation stability means we need to check at least these four parameters so these are the major analysis parameters under stability first one is uplift resistant check what it means suppose you, you need to consider the foundation shape like in the left corner bottom suppose it is subject to uplift resistant uplift loads from the tower structure then this will cause a push up of foundation so in order to resist this uplift resistant we need to apply the soil subsoil loads of the foundation and the sulfate of the overall foundation so summation of this red color arrow downward which is a subsoil weight and the magenta color or pink color arrow downward which is a weight of concrete foundation so combination of these two should be greater than the uplift to force which is in blue color arrow so then this foundation can be set as a stability against the uplift second one is check for soil bearing pressure so every foundation which are subject to structural loads used to have a, a pressure at the base slab which should be in downward direction this should not exceed the safe bearing capacity of soil which is in upward direction due to the reaction or interaction of soil with the foundation so this safe bearing capacity we can able to get from the input data called soil parameter in that soil parameter under soil investigation we, we can able to get the safe bearing capacity of the soil this bearing pressure which is coming due to the structure and foundation weight should not exceed the green color upward safe soil bearing pressure so then that foundation can be set as a stable with respect to soil bearing pressure then the third check is a 
check for sliding this is nothing but when there is a longitudinal or transverse side thrust which is to be applied from the structure loads the foundation used to sway little bit away from its original position in the horizontal direction towards the same direction of force side force so in order to resist this we need to check our foundation geometry whether it is capable to withstand and not only the sulfate of the foundation and the subsoil here the soil interaction that is internal frictional resistant of soil is very important so that there are some certain percent of reduction in sulfate and sulfate of soil and the concrete in terms of angle of internal friction of soil so we cannot able to consider the whole structure or foundation weight which is acting downward towards the uh, horizontal thrust because horizontal load is in a, a perpendicular direction to the vertical downward direction so we need to apply some soil resistant against the sliding say for example internal friction of soil so for that we need to apply some 2/3 of tan phi that is the phi is the angle of internal friction so applying this for 45 degree suppose 45 degree of internal friction of soil it will come 2/3 of tan 45 means it is 0.67 so we need to multiply this 0.67 into the sulfate of the subsoil structure and uh, and the foundation so all this combination weight into that 0.67 which is uh, arrived from the internal friction of soil if you check with that uh, value with that horizontal thrust if it is exceeding that means it is safe so that the horizontal thrust can be in control so that the foundation will not sway or move away in the direction of the horizontal thrust so this check is called sliding check next one is a overturning check this horizontal thrust or any forces which are applied on the top of the foundation will have a moment actuating moment which will cause a tilting or a rotating of a foundation towards the moment direction if the foundation is having a weak or very less amount of weight with this rotational resistant so for that we need to have a good geometry of a foundation so that it can resist the overturning moment also so for that weight into the centroid of the foundation should be uh, multiplied to calculate the restored moment or resistant moment so that the resistant moment should be greater than the actual moment in order to consider this foundation as a stable for overturning so these are the four geometrical check or foundation stability check we need to consider under analysis of foundation so next one is design of elements this is a third components of foundation design so here design of elements for type 1 pad and chimney type of foundation we need to do the three major design one is design of stub the second one is design of chimney the third and final one is design of a bottom pad you can see in the picture there is a gray color angular member so that's that is a stub which is which is to be connected to the main leg of the transmission line tower and followed by you can see a reinforcement over the stub angle so that reinforcement is for chimney chimney is a vertical or inclined component towards the main leg or a extension of legs so that chimney to be connected to the bottom pad with a reinforcement so this chimney and the bottom pad are monolithic in reinforcement so this is so these three are the major component of a foundation stub chimney and bottom pad we need to design these three under the type 
foundation pad with the chimney so when coming to the detail design of each individual components stub chimney and bottom pad we need to have these parameters for design of stub we need to do check for embedment embedment is nothing but how much that length of the angle member stub member to be inserted into the concrete so this is based upon the bond stress of concrete we need to calculate and the interaction of the steel with the concrete we need to calculate second one is combined tension and shear check we need to do combined uh, compression and shear check we need to do bold design and uh, cleat angle design because this cleat angle to be connected to the stub with the bold design or sometimes it is a, a weld so even that case we need to design a weld instead of a bold so it should have both the connection design and the cleat angle design in under a design of stub and finally we need to check the compressive stress in concrete due to the load transferred through the stub so these are the six checks we need to do in a design of stub next one is a design of chimney so this design of chimney used to have two steps one is a compression with bending another one is tension with bending for these two criteria we need to check the member capability and according to that reinforcement to be designed so compression is nothing but the structure is subject to a compression which is a vertical downward load and this chimney which will act like a inclined column are subject to both compression with bending so that bending movement will occur due to the side thrust also the eccentric axial forces of tension and compression so with these two consideration we need to check the reinforcement requirement for the chimney and the second case is tension with bending so this is like tension is uplift or upward direction force which is parallel to the chimney span chimney height also this tension with bending bending is occurred mainly because of side thrust and the eccentric axial forces eccentric eccentric forces of tension and compression act on the chimney so for this also we need to check and the reinforcement should be provided accordingly the third main component is design of bottom pad this is having a four major activities one is reinforcement steel we need to calculate for both compression and tension second one is we need to check one way shear so you can see in the picture this is a reinforcement arrangement of bottom pad which is showing two layers one is at the top another one is at the bottom so accordingly we need to calculate the tension and compression and uh, provided to the respective zones check for one way shear so this is nothing but due to the column at a location center to the bottom pad when there is a uplift when there is a upward uh, uh, pressure due to the soil reaction there will be a shear in one direction as showing in the picture right top at a distance d that is d is a effective depth of bottom pad from the column face so you can see a red color line here so this is a shear pane in this shear pane there will be a shear used to occur so this shear to be checked according to the concrete and the reinforcement strength we had provided so there are various uh, code norms are there we will look into that calculation part in a later video and the third one is the punching shear or two way shear so this will occur along the circumferential 
area of the column with the span of d by 2 d is a effective depth of bottom pad so you can see the blue color line here in below the column location which is a dispersion of upward reaction which causes the shear at the circumferential part of the column so we need to check this under shear criteria for two way or punching shear and the fourth one is to check for bond stress so this is nothing but there is a interaction of concrete with the shear so this shear strength there is a concrete and the reinforcement interaction is there during the reaction of shear so this bond stress to be check the concrete bond strength to be check along with the shear acquired due to the upward pressure so so that the reinforcement can be checked and as the provided reinforcement whether those are suitable for the bond stress of the concrete so this check to be done under the design of bottom pad so these are the uh, primary method or the design philosophy of type 1 that is pad and bottom pad and chimney type of a foundation for transmission line tower thank you look description for more related videos subscribe to this channel for more updates